Hey, and welcome back to part two of the Briggs & Stratton 5 Horse Rebuild. Here's where we're at right now. And we got our little engine back from getting cleaned. Looks pretty good. Amazing the difference. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure this thing's all dried off real nice. And we're going to paint it up to look like something. So, if, you know, if we're going to rebuild the thing, we might as well make it look good too. Okay, so our intake valve is brand new. All right. And as you can see inside the seat, it's okay, but we can do a lot better. We take a little bit of our valve grinding compound, and this doesn't take a lot. Go under the underside of the valve here, and I like to put a little on the seat. And again, this whole block will get recleaned after this, so don't worry about the grit. We take our valve tool, a little moisture on it, plunk her down, and then we spin our valve. And if you can hear that, that's the valve spinning in the bore. Then we lap in our exhaust valve. And as we wet the valve off, you see a nice, that ring that you're seeing there, that's your seal on the exhaust valve. So we know that's a nice, good seal. We kind of see the, see the same thing on the valve seat itself. That nice ring all the way around. Now we know we've done a good job of sealing in the valves into the cylinder. And again, we're going to put the valves aside because we're going to take the whole block apart and wash it, uh, make sure we get any compound for wood we had to sand the head, any of the valve grinding compound, anything in here. We're going to wash this whole block all over again, even though we've already painted it and degreased it. But one more wash isn't going to hurt. All right, first on our reassembly, now that we've washed everything, it's all honed out, valves are lapped, it's ready to go back together. We're going to put our valves in. A bit of lube in each of the guides. Our exhaust valve drops right in. Intake valve drops right in. And uh, we get our springs. Now, on the five horse. Tall spring, short spring. See there? Shorty, tall guy. Tall guy goes on the exhaust. Short guy goes on the intake. Okay. We find our valve keeper, and they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. Okay, so we're installing the valves. We have the <clears throat> intake valve installed, and the spring and the keeper are in there. Now, to do this, you're going to need this special tool. It's a little small engine spring compressor, and I'll put a link in the description below for this. But one thing to keep in mind with this, when you... <laughs> Go to load your spring. Okay, you want to make sure these are reasonably tight in there. And you go to load your spring. And whatever you do, don't take your finger off the end here. Because as you crank down, and you compress that spring, it's got a lot of energy. And if the spring pops out, it sends the spring flying and it's in that little keeper down there. Well, you're never going to see that again. It's just going to go somewhere. Somewhere. You'll never see it again. So the objective of this is to put the valve in, slide the spring over, valve in, slide the keeper over, and it's locked in place. Okay, and you lock it down and then you release the tension on your spring. You want to go hat up. Because if you place it upside down, it's never going to go in. You're going to struggle, struggle, struggle with it. Okay. So curved in, into the spring. Finger on the back side. Compressor spring. Slide your tool out. And your valve is installed. Okay. Moving on. Before we could put our crank before we could put our crank in, we need to install the new seals. And this is just like any other seal. Just use your driver or a socket, tap it into place. Should be real easy. 
And I like to find the corresponding socket. Now on these services, these are a bushing rather than a bearing, like a bearing on a newer like Predator type engine. So we want to make sure we get enough on both of the bushing surfaces for the case and for the cover. And more is actually a little better here. You don't really want to start up this thing dry. It does get oil by the oil splashing around inside of the case but on that first startup you don't want anything dry so a good amount of assembly lube in here you can use assembly lube of your choice you can use grease you can use whatever you like the crc engine assembly lube i've used this on oh every kind of engine there is and it's never let me down, so it's good stuff. Okay, the cam is ready to install, but we have to first put in our lifters. Same thing on these. Lots of lube. On the stem and on the contact surface with the cam. That makes everything move. And we install these. And the benefit of the lube is that the lube will hold that lifter up in place until we can put in our camshaft. Okay, and with our two lifters in place, we can install that cam. And just like the crank, your camshaft is going to have an indicator, the little dot. There we go. Little dot right there. Matched, it matched up to this dot. And that is your cam timing. And when you get your assembly together, those little dots should line up just like so. And as you turn the motor over, you check for valve movement. Make sure that everything is working correctly. Everything does look good. We go one more rotation, bring the motor back around a second time, just to make sure our dots are still lined up. All right, when you go to install your rings, before you install them on the piston, you want to set them in the cylinder. Make sure they sit flat. You can use the old piston upside down for that, like so. Let me show you. And that just makes sure it's sitting flat in the bore. And you want to check your ring gap to make sure it's in spec. Every engine's a little different. I'll put up a little post here. It tells you what it should be, but I can tell you mine. They're in spec. They're a tad bit on the loose side, but that's okay. It'll run just fine. And let's go ahead and get these on the piston. We have our new piston, standard size, because we didn't have to bore this thing out. Just a little bit of hone. Didn't take too much material off. We'll go ahead and set our rings on. Now these particular set can go in either way. And your big thick one corresponds with the big thick ring on the bottom, in case you didn't know. But, um, pretty simple. Just try not to overstress the ring. They should pop right in place. And then the top and the second ring are the same. No weird edge to look for, no dots or anything like that. These can go in just like the oil retention ring, first or second or upside down, doesn't matter, stuff like that. It's, this is real basic engine stuff to install your rings on your piston. When we get this done, we'll be right back. And you want to make sure you're keeping the same orientation on your connecting rod. This piston is the way it came out. There's the factory markings and the casting marking on that side. The opposite side is blank. So that's how we want to assemble the new one to keep everything the same where this where this point standard this should go towards the valves so that would be the outside so we want to assemble in this fashion here new wrist pin new piston new connecting rod new 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 and let's not forget our assembly lube 
Hey. And we line the two up. It should press in real nice and easy. If this doesn't go in easy, stop. There's something really, really wrong. So make sure this whole assembly goes in nice and easy. And then you can see there's a little ring in there. That's where our little spring keepers go. Let's get them out and installed. And there's many different tools you can use for this purpose. I like to use just a regular needle nose pliers, a thumb over it just to make sure it doesn't hop out. Once it's in the hole, guide it in there with your trusty screwdriver. And once you get it locked in, the edges of the spring should disappear in that groove and you should just have those two little dudes pointed up and your retainer sits in that groove real nice. And then you could push the wrist pin fully down to seat it and then install your little lock on the opposite side. And then you have your keepers installed on both sides. Keeps your wrist pin in place. Should slide real nice. Should be real loose at this point. So now let's get some, we're gonna use just some regular motor oil. We're gonna douse this in a little bit of just regular motor oil and install the piston in our cylinder. We gotta take the cap off first. Let me show you how that's done. Shameless plug for Castrol GTX, which we wanna Get this piston good and oiled up and the cylinder good and oiled up before we try to install it. This will ensure that the engine does not dry start, which can cause damage and all kinds of bad stuff. And we liberally oil our piston. And you put a little oil. We put a little pre-lube on the bottom of the inside of the connecting rod so when it sits down on the crank it has lube. And again, orientating our markings toward the valves. We set our piston on top of the engine. We put our Castrol GTX to the side. There's a link in the description for this stuff too. Then we open up our ring compressor tool. And we want to bring that piston up just a little bit to capture that bottom ring. Tighten our tool down. Make sure our tool is sitting flat on the cylinder. We guide the bottom of the connecting rod onto the crank through the bottom of the engine here. And we gently tap our piston down. And our piston is installed. And before we put our piston in, we made a little mark on the cap. So we know that that goes to the inside of the motor. So we assemble our cap on the connecting rod the way it came out and the way it was machined. And again, with a generous amount of Free loop here, we install our cap on our connecting rod. You should be able to just press it and it'll stay in place. You get your oil splasher and your nut keeper, and your nut keeper like so. Install your bolts through your two little cool little parts here. Okay, and installing our side cover, easy easy. We get our new gasket because we've cleaned all the surfaces up. We've put just a touch of black silicone kind of in the corners. Hold the gasket in place real nice. Little black silicone along the bottom and around the bolt holes on the cover. And pre-lube in the cam bushing, on the crank bushing, and on the flat to where it all matches up. Here, slider on. Couple taps <clears throat> to get everything seated on the crank and seat the cam. Because we didn't put a lot of pre lube in there, so there's probably a little pressure. We put in our bolts. Again, there's a torque spec for those that we'll put up here. And then let's do our head gasket. Then our head gasket and cylinder head, and we've cleaned up the surface on here, so all is good. And I like to start the head gasket on a couple stud, on a couple of the bolts, just makes it easier so it doesn't walk around. And then you place two bolts in the hole. Everything's lined up real easy. And again, you go through the torque sequence. Pop, 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 pop. And I'll, again, I'll put the torque specs back up on the screen. And then we'll torque down our cylinder head. We'll be right back. Okay, so we have our base engine assembled. 
Let's put on our breather cover. Okay, so our breather cover is on. We have the basic motor assembled, but it is pretty greasy, grimy gopher guts if you take a look at it. So let's clean it up. And bam, there we go. Gas tank's on, new carburetor. Just to remember, that's the old carburetor. So that's a huge improvement. Cleaned out the gas tank because new gas tanks were super expensive. Our header kit did not come yet, but this I can assure you that this muffler, even though it is a stock one, no longer has any baffling. New plug, engine's all painted up nice and neat. Flywheel's on, choke's on, everything's ready to go. The only thing is somehow we lost our screws for our coil, but we'll get some of those tomorrow. Get the coil back on this thing and get it fired up. And a couple new screws from the hardware store. We're all set. We can put our front blower cover on. Well, there you go, guys. Complete Briggs flathead rebuild. Let's zoom out a little bit. You're probably asking, well, how's it run? Well, tune in next time. And then we'll fire this bad boy up. We'll put it on a cart, and then we'll do a little torture testing with our new recently rebuilt Briggs Flathead. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time, and we'll make some noise. See ya.